Oh, so I will share an open source tool we built recently inside the Seattle office. Uh, it's a Java profiler, JVM profiler. So quick survey, so how many people use Java here? Okay, yeah, not so much. <laughs> cool, so hopefully other people, you, if you don't use Java and uh, you can get some idea here also, you can apply that to other language. We use Spark a lot. So Minshi's team, uh, the, Mika, the machine learning team, they, they, is, uh, they are very heavily Spark users. They run thousands of applications or tens, tens of thousands of applications every day. And we have other team use Spark a lot also. So our team, our dev platform team, we support all these other teams to use Spark. So whenever they have Spark questions, they will come to us. And uh, actually, we uh, we just talked yesterday. There are so many Spark questions, and we spend a lot of time supporting other teams. That's one of the reasons we want to build a profile to help troubleshooting issues. So one issue when we support the Spark application, we find. Uh, one change we find is uh, it is a very large scale and uh, it is very distributed. So for Spark, uh, yeah, some people may already know Spark, uh, some people may not know that very well. So a quick, a very short introduction about Spark is, uh, so when, when Spark application can run on multiple machines, for example, here we have uh, 200 servers. So one application can run in so many machines. And uh, each machine, for each application, there will be running one process. And uh, each machine can run multiple processes. So the application and the machine is kind of one-to-one, -one or kind of many-to-many -many mapping. It's, it's just uh, not one-to-one -one mapping. So that makes things a little complicated. For example, we want to profile Java process. So there's some existing tool. You can manually hook up to the process and collect some data. But when we have such scale in Uber, we have, we can see here, every day we have 70,000 of applications running in Uber. And the one application may have 1,000 executors. That means 1,000 processes across the whole cluster. So it's impossible for developers to manually attach to these processes to do the profile. It, you just cannot do it. It's too many processes and machines there. So yeah, this is a big change before we have this tool. And uh, another challenge is the efficiency challenge. As we grow our business, we have more and more applications and we use more and more risk machines, resources. We keep adding more servers, but still the growth is too fast. We cannot keep up. The machines cannot keep up with the growth. And uh, on the other side, we find uh, sometimes all the machines are not fully utilized. So we take one Spark application, for example. So when that, that Spark application is running for uh, 1,000 machines, we find, okay, it's, alloc it's allocated a lot of memory for that application. But in reality, it's used kind of only half of all the resources. So it's a, a big waste of the resources. If we can freeze up all these unused resources, we can make other applications running faster and we can run more applications. So that's another efficiency challenge we, we're facing here. So, so to solve this, uh, we built a Uber JVM profiler. So yeah, it's hard to get a good name. <laughs> so I get this very, very simple name, kind of a little dummy. <laughs> so basically the profiler is a, Java agent, so it can attach to every executor. So yeah, for people who do not know Java very well, is, uh, so Java is a very, very good language. Uh, by design, it has some mechanism. You can attach one agent when you launch a Spark application. So that agent, uh, the code of that agent stay outside of, the, of your application, but during runtime, it can run inside your process. So this provides a very unique opportunity for us. For example, when other teams, they, they wrote their Spark applications, we want to profile their application. We don't need to go inside their application source code and change their code to profile. We can just attach 
the Java agent from outside to their application. So we can collect a lot of metrics. And the Java agent provides some ways. For example, you can use the GMX, Java and Bean technology. So it's kind of a Java, uh, Java metric, Java system level metric system. For example, you can get CPU usage, you can get memory usage. Uh, and we find it's not enough. And uh, for Linux, especially for Linux, there's a special file system called PROC file system. In that file system, you can get more details about your process. For example, your native memory usage. Because we know Java is a managed memory, so it's hard to get the native memory usage information. Through the PROC file system, you can get that detailed information and that can help you. We, we will talk about a use case later. And for this profiler, we utilize uh, Java code instrumentation to provide some advanced features. So it can change the Java binary code on the fly. You do not need to really change the source code. So the Java agent can dynamically intercept the byte code when the Java binary get loaded and it will change the byte code so on the fly. So in that case, it can hook up with each Java method and uh, tell you, for example, how many times your method is running and how long it takes. It's kind of give you some way to look into the inside of your process without you to have the source code of that application. So we have the profiler, then we send the, we get a lot of metrics and we can send metrics to different places. So internally we use Kafka a lot. So we send, send Kafka as a data sync. So by default, it also supports, uh, you can print out your console output. So you can just check your local files. And uh, it is extensible. So we can see here, so the reporter is an is a interface. You can implement your own reporter. For example, if you have database, you can write a new reporter and uh, save your database. Then you can hook up with your application. So this is some internal details. So inside the Java agent, we have different uh, profiler classes which do collect different metrics. And we integrate this with Uber's internal data infrastructure. And uh, this is kind of very typical, I think, for, for every company which has a lot of data. So we have data source part, so normally it's go to Kafka. And we have real-time debugging part, the real-time part so we, we have a streaming job, we use Flink and uh, calculate the metrics in the application level, just make it simple for human to, to look at in a very simple way. And we save that in MySQL and we have some web page to view the metrics. And we have offline analysis. So we dump a lot of data to HDFS. Then we use high presto spark uh, to query all this data. And for this, uh, one scenario is, uh, for example, we have running the Hadoop cluster for one year or six months, and some application may have some pattern. For example, some application, their usage may keep growing, or the, the cluster resource usage is uh, fluctuated every day during different clock, so we can get that pattern and we can optimize the system. Yeah, how we use it? Yeah, this may be too detailed or too technical. Uh, for people who know Spark, in Spark, the simple way to submit a Spark application is use a command line called Spark Submit. So here we just want to show, just by some command, com, command line arguments like this, blah, blah, blah. And you just put something there, then it can run with your application. There's no code change needed. Also, if you have just a, a simple Java application, you can also use a single command to hook it up with your application. So in short, it's uh, just configuration. Just by configuration, you can run it with your application, yeah. These are some common uh, use cases we use in Uber. The first thing is uh, we, we normally need to do the memory deep dive for Spark application. For Spark, uh, uh, the container I put here, the container is basically the executor, the process 
for your Spark application on a single machine. So Spark uh, asks you to set up a memory size for that container before you launch it. And uh, normally it's hard to know beforehand how much memory is needed. So there's a lot of waste uh, in the very beginning. So for example, we have one very big Spark application. It has 1,000 executors. And each executor, originally people set it to seven gigabytes memory. So after using the profiler, we find actually it's only need five gigabytes memory. So for a single executor, we can save from seven gigabytes to five gigabytes, we can save two gigabytes memory. And for the whole application, you can save two terabytes of memory. So just by a simple profiling and a simple configuration change, we can save a lot of resource. So yeah, that's uh, one thing we commonly use. Another thing we use is Spark has a unique memory management technique. It has off heap memory, it has on heap memory, and uh, by default, the, the Java program is hard to tell you the off heap memory or, or native memory usage. As our profiler can utilize the Linux proc file system to get the native memory usage for your process. Another example here is uh, internally we use Hive a lot and we find uh, around 70% of queries in Hive they use less than 80 percent memory resources. So that means if we can change the 80 percent resource usage to 90 percent, it's a 10 percent efficiency gain. So we identify this opportunity and uh, this work is, is still going on. Uh, so if anybody interested, we can talk, talk later, yeah. And some very advanced use cases is uh, as we mentioned previously, the profiler can dynamically instrument the Java bytecode. So when, one thing here is we can configure something like this. So this is a, for Java, this is a class name. Yeah, class package name and a class name. And you can put a Java method name. Then you can put a, a number here. The number means for this method, which argument you want to profile. Here for this example is, uh, we want to write to HTTPS file. People will need to call this method. This is a HTTPS library. So this method has a, a argument. The first argument is the HTTPS file path. So for example, if you are just curious what files your application is writing, or from the company wide, you want to audit what files the people are writing sometimes for security per reason, or sometimes just for curiosity. And uh, you can configure something like this, and then you can attach the profiler with, with anyone's application. And it's here some result example. As a result, you can see, we can get application ID for the Spark, and then we can get all the file location they are writing. So for example, if you could have this with all the applications, so you will, you, feel, you will feel comfortable, so you know all the files the people are doing. Uh, it's very good for auditing purpose. Yeah, these are other use cases. Uh, so if you don't put that argument in the configuration, if you just put a class name and a method name, then it can profile the method itself. It can tell you how many times your method is running, how long it took. So here, here is a get block locations. It's, it's HFS name node. So for people, uh, yeah, some people may not familiar with HFS. So HFS name node is a centralized uh, uh, file system. You can just think that way. And uh, sometimes it become bottleneck. If your scale become very big, normally it will become a bottleneck and we want to trace it from the application level. So by configuration like this, we can trace it and we can identify the heavy load and the long latency method API call and you can take action to optimize your system. The profiler can also 
gen help you to generate some firm graph. The yeah, the firm graph. Some background. Yeah, some people may already know this. Uh, the firm graph is uh, some chart which can show how how long each method in your application takes. Let's say if you have a uh, some method, which is a hot spot, it may take a lot of time. For example, here is a spike. And uh, this is very helpful to help you to identify which parts of your application is a critical path and uh, a lot of CPU time is spent there. So the profiler can collect all the Java stack traces and aggregate all the traces and compute and generate the metrics. The, there are some other tools you can just collect that metrics and generate this, this graph. Yeah, we, we open source it. It's very easy to find it. it you just search uh, Uber, then JVM profiler, so you can find it. And uh, we still have a lot of work we want to do, and uh, we're still <coughs> trying to find more benefits to implement. The one thing is dynamic configuration. So my common scenario is uh, when some people launch their Spark application, they find their application stuck somewhere, and the process doesn't move on. And they're just curious what this application is doing. So if at that time you can dynamically turn on the profiler and the profiler can get you all the stack traces it is running and generate a flame graph on the fly, for example, then it's very easy for you to identify which method your application is currently running. And uh, you, can, you can take action, you can take optimize. Also network, we're still researching how to collect me network metrics in uh, each process level. It, it's not that easy. We res I researched uh, a lot of different uh, uh, possibilities, but it's still very hard. So if anybody has suggestions, so <laughs> yeah, I will be very glad to, to learn from you, yeah. Yeah, so it's an open source project here, so welcome to contribute to that. Also, yeah. Our team is uh, still looking for many people. So if you are interested, just talk with us. <laughs>